on January 13th, 2017, I went up to Burnaby, BC, Canada, which is just east of Vancouver, British Columbia, to race on their great 200 meter indoor velodrome. This was my first time racing on the track. I had previously done a clinic here in mid-December, which gave me many of the nuances I needed to ride the track safely. But in hindsight, I wish I would have gone up and been able to do the learn to race uh, clinic that they put on. I do have a ton of experience racing on the 400 meter outdoor track at Marymore, though I am only a cat four. I certainly could have used a couple extra reps at sprinting into the corners and a few other of the nuances. My main worry was of course being safe and that actually kept me out from being doing anything in the competition part but by the end of the races that I did I felt that I could actually race well and my only excuse then was my lack of courage and my lack of fitness. That said, a uh, really great facility, really enjoyable. Uh, you do have to be careful when you're going around those corners to make sure you're carrying speed. If you go less than 18 miles an hour, you are likely to fall and slide down the track. It's generally not that dangerous to fall going five miles an hour on a wood track. Where the danger is, if you're high up on the track and you do that, when you slide down the track, you can take other people out who are riding 20 miles an hour or faster. And that, of course, can be very dangerous to them and, of course, to yourself. To be able to race and train at this facility, I had to make sure that I had travel insurance in case anything went wrong because my costs wouldn't be covered by the Canadian government. I also had to get a UCI license. Somebody told me afterwards that I didn't need the travel insurance if I had the UCI license, which is I'll have to look into, but I'd rather be safe than sorry in those situations. Looking at the track here, that blue band down at the bottom, it's called the Cote d'Azur or something like that in French. My French is terrible, apologies but it is what you use to get on and off the track. And you can, in fact, ride all the way around that without falling off. And I did not know that the first time I was there, so I always tried to slow down in that 100 meters or speed up in that 100 meters. But once I learned that, it made it pretty easy to get on and off the track. You just take that shoulder look and see where everybody else is and get up to speed and get going. Same thing for coming down and you enter on the straightaways. It's pretty similar to Marymore except that you can enter either on the front stretch or the back stretch. If you see that rail we just passed, that is the starting rail and it is of course much shorter than Marymore and what you do is you either take a warm-up lap and come in kind of high and just slow down enough to stop there or you just ride up at a, a shallow angle to get there. When you start, the people at the front of the rail actually drop all the way down to the blue band because they can't get up to speed in time. And the people in back can be up on the higher parts, but you do got to get going because right about when you get to the start finish line, they start the neutral lap and you're going 20 miles an hour, which is something that I wasn't used to as somebody who races at Marymore. Our neutral lap speed at the Jerry Baker Velodrome at Marymore is much slower. There is a nice document they have when you fill out your waiver that you also sign that tells you really what you need to know about riding on the track and how to be safe. And of course, hopefully people on the track are communicating with you while you're riding and while you're racing as well. If you are coming up to this track to race, you do need to bring rollers. There isn't really anywhere on the infield that you can warm up while other races are going on. I did make the mistake of leaving my rollers at home, but that will not happen again. One of the many cool things about racing this track is that they have an electronic starting gate for a single rider. Those starting gates are quite expensive, so there isn't one at Marymore, so it's nice there's one up here. I used it a couple times when I was up for the clinic and got some video of it, so I will link that video down in the description. Coming up here, you will see me trying to get some sprints in to work on, well, both getting my legs warmed up and getting the skill set of being able to sprint on a track that has much tighter corners than I am used to. And it really was something that I took for granted that I could do. And in fact, I wasn't very good at it and even felt that I was somewhat dangerous at it. 
when I was racing my first race, which was the Kirin, so I let people get by me, though they probably would have gotten by me pretty soon thereafter anyway, and just practice sprinting the corners. And I did this for a couple of the races I did just to make sure I was starting to get comfortable on the track. So I, I do suggest that people get up there early and get a lot of reps in on this part. It's really a different feeling, though it's also something that makes this track just so much fun once you start to get it down. And I did feel I was getting it down in my last couple of races. There is a couple of differences about where you put your head. And of course, on this track, your neck gets a little more sore and your back might get a little more sore but nothing you can't get used to and train for. And then of course there is getting off the track, which initially scared me. Uh, it's much more difficult than at the Jerry Baker Velodrome where we have tons of space on a 400 meter track. That said, after you do it once or twice, it's really simple. Just make sure you don't hit that concrete apron or you will slip in the corner. Same if you cut a hard angle on that sport court. I do hope everybody from Seattle gets up to this track. It's a lot of fun. The people up there are great, and it's well worth doing.